What's up everyone? Welcome back to another MWZ video. Today we're going to be discovering just how tough these zombies in MWZ really are. No, we're not going to be challenging them to some kind of boxing match to slug it out, but instead we'll be finding out how much health or HP these zombies actually have. Now this is a topic of MWZ that I haven't really seen anyone else discuss before, especially in any depth or with test data to prove anything. And that's likely because it is somewhat difficult to show without having all the numbers and the variables to account for when you're fighting against these zombies. But in this video I've went through some extensive testing and done the math with what I could find to give us the best possible number for the total HP of the zombies. Now that being said, this video will only be covering normal and armored type of zombies in each of the three tiered areas of the normal map. So this will exclude the special and elite undead enemies, the worm bosses, mercenary AI soldiers, and enemies enhanced by the disciples or the aether storm. And also for simplicity reasons, I've excluded zombies of the dark aether tiers in this video. But if enough people ask for it, I may do a separate video covering most of these other enemies' HP numbers in it instead. Anyways, that's enough of an introduction for this topic, let's get into this. As most players probably know by now, not all zombies in MWC have the same amount of HP, even within the same threat level zone. In fact, there's quite a difference between each of the three zones just on its own. So for this breakdown of how tough zombies can get, I'll be showing the tested HP values for 7 different types of zombies. This will include Tier 1 Normal and Light Armored Zombies, Tier 2 Normal and Light Armored Zombies, and Tier 3 Normal, Light Armored, and Heavy Armored Zombies. Now this version of Call of Duty Zombies has taken heavy inspiration in many of the game features and mechanics from Black Ops Cold War, so it is fair to assume that the zombies health and armor works very similar to how it did in that game. In Cold War Zombies, the zombies HP increase with each new round, but in MWZ there are no rounds, just the separate tiered areas with zombies having the health comparable to a round of the similar difficulty. Also, in Cold War, the zombies had armor. This acted as a damage reducer for both the players and the zombies alike. Armor would reduce some of the incoming damage until it was depleted and broken. However, in MWZ, I don't think armor works quite the same way. For players, it simply acts as an additional health points, which take all incoming damages first and don't regenerate naturally like normal health does. It also seems to work this way with the zombies as well, when you damage an armored zombie, you seem to do less damage and receive a blue shield icon by your hit marker icon. You get this until you do enough damage to break the zombie's armor, which then you may notice that it seems like you're doing more damage afterwards. But I don't believe you're actually doing more damage, instead you're just dealing direct damage to the zombie's health because it is disproportionate to its total armor HP. What I mean by that is the zombies have a smaller amount of armor HP compared to the normal health HP. And because the total health HP and the total armor HP are shown in one combined health bar, it gives an illusion that the armor is significantly reducing your damage. But in reality, you're actually dealing full damage towards their armor HP first, then when the armor breaks, you're dealing the full damage towards their normal HP. While this sounds confusing, you'll see that this is evident when I compare the total health of normal zombies versus armored zombies. Even within the same tier area, an armored zombie still takes the same amount of damage to kill after its armor breaks as normal zombie takes to kill from full health. Effectively meaning that armored zombies have overall more HP than normal ones do because of the extra HP the armor gives them. Now you might be asking, so how did I find all this out and test it in game? Well, I used a similar method to what I used in my previous video where I tested and revealed how much increasing your weapon's rarity had an effect on it. The first thing I had to do here was find a weapon that dealt a consistent amount of damage per shot to simplify the calculations and to eliminate as many damage altering variables as possible. And after looking through the large pool of weapons available in MWC, I settled on a solid and iconic weapon to use in my testing. That weapon ended up being the SO-14 Battle Rifle from MW2, aka the Assault Rifle version of a classic M14. 
This gun deals a flat 50 damage per shot. And it has an effective damage range greater than 10 meters, so I shouldn't need to worry about damage drop off either. However, I didn't choose to use this gun simply for nostalgic purposes or because I'm in 14 gank for life. This weapon deals damage pretty consistently within its surprisingly short damage range. And what I mean by consistent is it has no additional multiplier for the upper torso versus the lower torso. Many of the weapons in this game show some increase of damage to the upper torso versus the lower or have an average damage value that doesn't multiply out very nicely over multiple shots. So any shots I land on the zombie center mass area should deal the same amount of damage regardless if I hit the upper portion or the lower portion of their body. And just like in my weapon rarity damage guide, I used a basic completely unmodified version of the SO14 to ensure there were no changes to the damage profile and to keep the most amount of consistency while I was testing this. Now finally to start showing the results of what I tested and found out. I'll be starting off with the zombies in the low threat zone or tier 1 area. For the normal zombies that you'll find in this area, they were taking 4 shots to the body at around 10 meters. However, the 4th shot didn't seem to be fully necessary and likely shows that their health isn't an exact multiple of 50. So to estimate and make the math later a little easier, I'm counting this last bit of health taken off by the final shot as just 10 HP. So with a little bit of quick math, you'll find that the health of a tier 1 normal zombie is about 160 HP. The first three shots dealt 50 damage each, and the fourth final shot dealing the last 10 HP to eliminate the zombie. And for everyone that likes round based zombies and knows their stuff, this makes tier 1 area zombies have slightly more HP than normal round 1 zombies would have. This next type of zombie is actually far more common in the tier 2 and 3 areas, but you can find some light armored zombies in the tier 1 area still. Here you can see that because the zombie is armored, it takes an extra shot to kill. However, you'll notice that the armor breaks after the second shot, meaning these zombies only have 100 HP of armor or less. But if you take into account that the normal tier 1 zombie have 160 HP, the armored zombies can only have a max of 90 armor HP to remain a 5 shot kill. And given that this 5 shot kill was consistent and the final shot doesn't look like it needed to take the full 50 HP, I've estimated that these tier 1 armored zombies have around 75 HP of armor. This gives a tier 1 armored zombie a total HP of roughly 235, which is similar to a zombie on round 2. Moving on into the more difficult medium threat area or tier 2 zone, you'll find the zombies are much more tough and much more commonly armored here. But starting off we have just the normal tier 2 zombie. These zombies are taking 31 shots to kill from the SO14 on average. With some quick math that gives us a health for these zombies at around 1500 HP total. And just like with the tier 1 zombies the final shot doesn't seem to be fully necessary so I count this last bit of health as just 10 HP which gives the normal tier 2 zombies a total estimated health of around 1500 HP, which is about 10 times more than the normal tier 1 zombies had. This HP total for tier 2 zombies is equivalent to what you would find on round 14. Now on to the armored tier 2 zombies, where you'll probably once again see that their armor seems to just provide extra HP instead of a damage reduction overall. These zombies took 41 shots on average to kill with roughly the first 10 shots needed to break their armor. Given that normal tier 2 zombies have about 1510 HP, this would mean that the tier 2 armored zombies have roughly 500 armor HP, meaning that these armored zombies are similar to ones you would see on round 19 in round base modes. Now comes the real number crunch. High threat zone or tier 3 zombies are the toughest normal zombies in MWC and the difference between tier 2 and tier 3 zombies are pretty substantial. 
and after finding a way to easily shoot at a tier 3 zombie, I ended up unloading around 280 shots from the SO14 before killing it finally. After some calculation of those numbers, I found that the normal tier 3 zombies have approximately 14,000 HP. This is a huge jump from the tier 2 zombies, but again, it's another increase of about 10 times more HP than the previous tier zone. This huge amount of HP is also what a normal zombie would have on round 37 in round base modes. And of course there is armored zombies in the high threat zone as well, so I had to test to see how much tougher these zombies are too. After another battle of shooting and swimming, I finally eliminated a light armored zombie using around 340 shots from the SO14. With some quick calculations, this gives light armored zombies a total HP of around 17,000. Which if we subtract the 14,000 from the normal health base, this gives zombies around 3,000 HP of armor. Which is insane considering that tier 2 armored zombies don't even have a total HP of that much. These zombies are almost as tough as ones you would see on round 40, but the numbers get even more insane than that. Interestingly, there are heavy armored zombies in the tier 3 zone as well. Which, if the name of them doesn't suggest it already, means that these zombies are heavily armored even more than its previous version. Once again, I took to the water to find out that it takes about 420 rounds from the SO14 to eliminate just one of these heavy armored zombies. And after a little more math, this gives these tanky zombies a total HP of 21,000. This means these zombies have roughly 7,000 HP and armor alone. Seeing this much HP on a zombie is something you wouldn't find in round base modes until round 42. These numbers are pretty ridiculous considering the gun I was using only deals 50 damage per shot, which is actually on the higher side for base damage output of most weapons in MWZ. However, when you apply rarity and pack a punch upgrades to your weapons, this usually multiplies your damage by some healthy factors and allows you to fight off zombies that are this tough much easier than I have shown. Knowing how strong the zombies are in each tier zone can allow you to figure up your weapon's effectiveness just on knowing what its base damage output is, increased by whatever upgrades are applied to it, and then putting those numbers up against whichever tier of normal or armored zombies you're going to be facing there. But knowing these numbers now and seeing how much armor on a zombie can increase its total HP to should give anyone a good idea of how fast a zombie's health scales up by each zone and how every weapon and a weapon upgrade stacks up against this. It's also interesting to note too that the zombie's health did seem to increase by a factor of 10 as you traveled to a higher threat level zone instead of just being a completely random increase or a set value that is directly comparable to specific rounds in round base mode. This video did take some time to collect the footage, analyze the data, and crunch the numbers to get this information, and still may be completely wrong because most of this was gathered by in-game experience and off what numbers are given if they are even the true values. Hopefully though this video is useful especially to the hardcore zombie players or the ones that like the technical things about zombies. And that's about all I've got for this MWZ video, so don't forget to like the video if you found this helpful or interesting, and leave a comment about it if you'd like to as well. And if you'd like to see more videos like this or my other Call of Duty Zombies content, please subscribe. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.